according to the New Testament, something quite extraordinary, unprecedented, unheard of, and unimagined happened that first Easter day. It wasn't just that the disciples felt that maybe life was going to go on and it might be all right, perhaps. It was that suddenly they discovered that the Jesus who they'd known to be very thoroughly dead and buried was alive again, and not just alive in what we call a spiritual sense, actually bodily alive. And quite quickly, because being first century Jews, they were used to this framework of thought, they began to put two and two together and say that the God they believed in, who was the creator of the whole world, had begun the work of new creation. The resurrection narratives aren't about, oh, well, that's all right, you go to heaven after you die. In fact, that's precisely not what they're about, because they're about God remaking the whole world, starting with Jesus. Often people preach sermons on Easter Day saying, in effect, oh, well, Jesus is alive again, so he's gone to heaven and one day we'll go and be with him. That's what Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are not saying. What they're saying is Jesus is alive again, therefore new creation has begun, and therefore we have a job to do. And that job was quickly phrased in terms of God's larger project to bring heaven and earth together into one. So that for the early Christians, one of the most dramatic changes from the way that they'd seen the world as Jews of the first century was that the idea of there being one little bit of territory which was somehow sacred and special and the rest of the world was sort of lesser uh, had gone completely. As we see already in Paul, the whole world is now God's holy land. And the Christians went out, puzzled of course, because this hadn't been their game plan, to tell the whole world that Jesus was its saviour and its Lord, and that rather than Caesar and the other human empires that come and go this way and that, Jesus was the one who was now running the show. One of the fascinating things about the stories that then develop as we see in the Gospels and in the early chapters of Acts is the way in which people were taken by surprise from the middle of their own misery and sorrow, we know so much about the misery and sorrow that so many people today in what we still call the Holy Land have suffered down the years. But again and again in those Easter stories, we find people who come to see Jesus through their own tears and to understand him through their own sorrow. Mary Magdalene at the tomb uh, sees first of all the angels and then Jesus while she is completely distraught and weeping and Jesus transforms that. The message of Easter is not, oh, well, it'll be all right by and by, is that the living God can come into the middle of the situations of sorrow, distress, complete, distraught, um, uh, un un unknowing how to cope with the world sort of situations, and can actually transform them right now, turn them around. Because at the heart of the Easter message is not just uh, a good news about something that happened a long time ago, not just good news about what God will do by and by. The risen Jesus says to his followers, the people who are just coming to terms with the transformation of their own misery, never mind anything else. He says to them that they now have a job to go out and say something and do something in the world. And the thing that they have to do and say in the world has a slogan which we often belittle. Jesus says, you've got to go out and announce repentance and forgiveness of sins. And for us, that as often in the Western tradition just mean I have to repent of my sins and I will be forgiven by God. But actually, it's much bigger than that. It's a message rooted in the resurrection of Jesus, which says that new starts are possible that whole communities and nations and peoples can look at the direction they've been traveling in and say, wait a minute, we're going in exactly the wrong direction. We need to turn around and go in the other direction. And that when that happens, then God, almost with a divine sigh of relief, says, I'm going to release you from the past, from all that enslaves and shackles you, not only individually, but as communities. 
God knows the Middle East needs that right now. The message of repentance and forgiveness flows directly out of the message of resurrection because it is all about God saying, this is the time when new creation is starting. You can leave the old behind and follow Jesus into the new life that he has prepared for all who will take him seriously.